Hey, 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 here's Captain K. Ahoy, you landlubbers, and welcome back to an in-between season of Factorio. This is season 1.5, a prerequisites episode before I'm gonna start season 2. In the last season, we built this very nice starter base. Neat, orderly, just big enough to produce everything that we need. We completed the goal of launching a rocket and now we're looking for bigger challenges. Since this one works so well to produce everything that we need, we're gonna, in this season, extend this just a bit to produce stuff that we don't produce yet. Like, um, what is it, like electric furnaces and so on. So that we have these in the masses, so we can scale this air base up to a mega base. As you can see, there's some room left to hook things up, a few patches. That's mainly to supply this base. And this base will supply us with all the goods that we need to expand, whoops, expand southwards, southwestwards. Uh, conquer all of that, that bay area here. And let's see how the map reveals. And most likely, we're gonna work with cells, with train in-betweens, or whatever other idea we're gonna come up with. So let me set up a few of the prerequisites that are necessary to do that, and I'll be right back. And we're back. I added this little cell at the end of our bus, and here we produce trains, wagons, steam engines and boilers and those tanks. The pipes here are for the engines and the boilers as well as those stone furnaces. So now we have uh, those items automated. I've extended this tileable cell but only to the bit where they produce the structure capsules because we're gonna need the structure capsules so that the worms and buggers don't attack all of our destroy capsules and especially us. So I did this in here, I squeezed uh, an assembling machine for furnaces, um, the electric ones, so we can build big smelting setups. So let's have a look at the map. We have claimed this beautiful peninsula. I've already started exploring a bit down here uh, to see how the terrain um, or how the lake wraps around the terrain. There is a bit of blue here that could indicate that with a little luck this uh, the water goes in here which will save us a lot of space for walling things off but already like if I continue this diagonal wall down here we can claim a lot of land. So let's, let's explore on this side a bit. Run in with grenades, place down a few distractors, kill everyone, and move on. That's the scheme. Let's collect that, that goo stuff, because we're gonna need it for research. And let's head to the next one. Same procedure as last time. So let's cut here. Because I was on a killing spree for a while. It's fun, but then it gets a bit boring. So let's see what the map actually says. It looks like this. I was fighting my way down here. I noticed now that I skipped this bit till there and uh, down here where this started to go inwards or like the, um, the land outwards here again. I started to fight my way over until I reached this shore that connected with that bit. And it looks like that our uh, little peninsula beautifully expands down here so we can nicely seal it off with a wall here and um, so let's do that let's let's clean 
all of this, uh, all of these, um, uh, well, local inhabitants actually claim their land and then build a wall down here at the south and let's make this peninsula great again. All right, guys, so here's what happened. If I go a bit southwards, you see this, you see this fault line. So I was fighting my way down here, cleaning up, and then I went a little bit more south. And apparently, when I updated the game from 1 point, uh, 0 0.13 on the Season 1 to 0 0.14 for the Season 2, apparently they have changed the terrain generation, and this must have created this fault line. It goes all the way across the map. So I decided to, instead of building the wall up here, building it down here along that fault line and then up here. You can see uh, this sharp edge here. So that's what we're going to do. Also, for this wall, I wanted to um, prepare it so that it's, it's, uh, it works for late game. Let's see, how do we do this? So the fault line is here maybe yeah like this and then the second row here and on this side like that so i wanted to make the the defense down here um so that it can stay all the way like this till late game and for that i'm going to make a combination of First of all, gun turrets in the front row. And that's because uh, gun turrets, they have... Uh, I also brought a very tiny little bit of ammunition. Because they have um, the highest DPM, damage per minute, right? So they do the most damage and are excellent against the behemoth fighters. Then... Behind the, those turrets, we're going to have a, a belt. It's going to resupply them. Wait, do I have some, some regular insert left down here? Yeah. So down here we have a, a row of inserter to resupply them. Like this, maybe. Yeah. And behind that, we're going to place down wall of laser turrets and should we need it we can even double that row up so we have uh, the short range but high dps um, bullet turrets behind that we have the longer range laser turrets in a double row should we need it and in between i wanted to squeeze every now and then one of those flamethrower turrets, maybe like that. Alright, so let's check on the range. So down here, if they come to that perimeter, the bullets are gonna hit them. A little before that, they're gonna be hit by the lasers. They And yeah, flamethrower have the longest range, so perfect. So. This wall should keep us safe forever. Uh, I can't imagine that it's possible for this wall to be breached. And should that happen, or should they really come close enough to damage that, then we can place a roboport behind all of that. So that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to start with a lightweight version of this wall. So I'm going to create a blueprint start to build that and then clean up the rest of the mess up here and then we see how the map looks like oh and almost forgot to mention um, another reason why i've built this down here is because i was actually looking for something like this an iron patch close to a copper patch because we want to resupply the bullet turrets automatically with the piercing rounds and they need five copper plates and one steel plate so um, iron and copper close together in close vicinity of the wall is perfect to resupply that so we have one patch here to supply the wall and very conveniently another one there that can supply the rest of the wall I assume and even here we got a bit of copper and iron a bit separate but that should work like a charm 
Alright, and we're done. The wall is finished, so let's head down there. There's my private train arriving, so let's hop in. Let's uh, quickly have a look at the map. So, down here you can see the finished wall section. We have ammo provided by these patches. I think this patch provides the oil for the flamethrowers. This is a three stage wall. We have the ammo turrets, then the laser turrets and the flamethrower turrets. So that should keep us safe. And as you could see, it's a nice uh, blockade to keep all of those aliens from invading our peninsula up here. I haven't explored this in that way. Probably we can also block the section of down here and here with two wall sections. But for now we have a vast amount of space for whatever future base plans we're gonna have. So enough chit chat, let's head down there to the wall. So I'm still not quite sure what, how to continue this uh, series of Factorio. We could build a mega base. It's more or less the only option that remains so far in the game. Some uh, set some silly threshold like I don't know a rocket per minute or something. So here we are. Let's switch this off so it doesn't run away, and let's have a look at the wall. It's nicely lit and all, so this is the diag uh, diagonal section. I had uh, to fiddle a bit to get all the stuff over there across this water. I could just use landfill of course, but I'm using it as a natural protection for now. Here you see all the piercing ammo magazines feeding these gun turrets. This is the row of laser turrets that I can double up should I need them. And every now and then in between we have flamethrowers. We could make them more dense, but right now, let's see where we can see that here. They have a very nice overlap, so that should be more than sufficient. This is one of the ammo factories providing this section of the wall and on the other side here we have the same so this feeds roughly this section and that one here feeds this section somewhere in here there's the split so for that there we have a, a nice nest that we use as a test for now I say let's let's test the effectiveness on of the wall let's build two gates quickly Oops. Where did it go? Here. So, let's see. Okay, in attack. We got the flamethrowers, we got the gun turrets, we got the lasers. They don't stand a chance, they don't even reach the wall. So, let's see how long this is gonna last with more pollution. Now you are kind of annoying, so let's just get rid of you. As you can see, I've cleaned um, a little section before the wall already, but they have already started to resettle to reclaim their land. Let's see, did I forget one? Those worms, yeah. See, this is uh, the remains of a previous base, and that's already their reclaim. But I think with that, I can build carelessly for a while, and I'm really curious how long it's going to take until I see the first damage on one of the wall sections. So, with that said, let's head back to the base and. I think that's it for today. 
I apologize for the long waiting time in between the seasons. I had a lot of work to be done. I set up a new computer, a Windows PC actually upgraded my my Windows machine. So I try to start to record from there, hopefully with better video quality, less lag and all of that. And that will also allow me to record other videos than Factorio, so stay tuned to that. And with these words, I wish you a very lovely day. Enjoy life and whatever you do, make sure that you always got a hands with of water on your keel. Arrgh.